I, I come to the studio every day and my intention is to my intention actually is to better myself my intention is to better myself and uh, not so much in the tradition of somebody like Picasso who was a misogynist who got away with a hell of a lot of uh, crap because he was such a genius <laughs> and I must say that Picasso is uh, is is extraordinary in his output and uh, apparently there were a hundred thousand works in the archives the Picasso archive has documented over a hundred thousand I mean that's extraordinary I don't know maybe Warhol surpassed that because uh, Warhol had what he called a factory and he produced art on a kind of factory basis. Now, not to be misunderstood, I, I mean, Warhol making prints and Picasso making actual work, uh, I suppose, well, Picasso did etchings and uh, reproductions to a, to a certain extent, but the level that Warhol, uh, uh, the, the extent to which Warhol produced work on the, uh, I think Warhol probably surpasses Picasso. But uh, the point of this little conversation that I'm going to have with myself, I just finished the first Devil in the Daffodils and uh, it's very fitting that this particular devil uh, ended up being uh, inspired by the Mona Lisa, the most archetypal artwork in the, uh, in the history of, uh, of our expressing ourselves. Uh, this is considered to be the... Uh, what the uh, the poster child the poster woman of art and quite frankly I, I stood in front of the Mona Lisa and uh, um, not to undermine or diminish I mean da Vinci was uh, fabulous he uh, uh, no uh, it's it's sort of it feels weird to say fabulous I'm sitting here saying da Vinci was fabulous of course I mean it's it's sort of like saying uh, a flower looks beautiful. It's like, what's the point? It is what it is. Yeah. So my my gist here, I'm I'm working on the concept of the devil in the daffodils, and it's evolving. And I come to the studio when the idea of coming to the studio is to, in some way, better myself. And by bettering myself, the point behind that is I understand some things, and I develop, and I evolve, and it takes time. This is one of the uh, this is one of the concepts that has not been really too popular in popular culture because anything that you gain is uh, you you need to work at you you just don't have a drop in your plate and now I'm going to admit something here I have always had this kind of uh, piggyback feeling in many ways uh, piggyback in the sense that I have made my paintings. And I've relied on my extended family, the vision of fabulous painters, mostly painters, but not just painters, there's sculptors and dancers, musicians that have inspired me to do what I do. And there has been a piggyback thing going on. Now this has changed in the last three, four, five years because I think when you do something with integrity, and uh, now th this is an important word because integrity comes into this from the point of view that when you are exposed to people around you and uh, particularly on what is called the media, alternative media or mainstream media, there is what I believe to be a fundamental flaw in all of the things that are being propagated at us, towards us, and that is everybody wants to get a bit of a leg over. Not only a bit of a leg over, but they wouldn't mind if they'd rule the roost. It's like if you, if I, I was listening to uh, 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 somebody talking about conspiracies and all those kind of things, and I'm, I'm a big believer that there is a hidden reality, the kind of matrix thing that is uh, being perpetrated against us, undermining our sovereignty integrity and don't get into arguments I had somebody say oh sovereignty you're not sovereign if you go to the store and buy something you've given up your ability to survive by yourself well come on please people there is a level of sovereignty of cooperation we all need to cooperate with one another it has nothing to do with sovereignty it has to do with 
being able to choose when you're of right mind and soul that you can make your choice. That is sovereignty. So, uh, and of course, the uh, pioneers and the Neanderthal existing in the steppes of Africa, they were self-sufficient, yes, of course, but we have developed, we have evolved, we have progressed. All right, put, a, put aside all that kind of uh, subterfuge which is going on all the time, but this is very disturbing. This information, which is, I think, part of my devils in the daffodils, is isolating that which is of no consequence to us as people. Let's identify the devils in the daffodils. And now the interesting thing part, the, the, interesting, the, the, the interesting thing is that it goes both ways. This is not something that I really understood or grasped until I started to actually make a piece of work. And I think there are others coming and I've, I've started. And you know, in my process, you can see here, there, there are these, uh, these uh, large sheets of plastic that I work on and I have a kind of company slogan on there. And what you, uh, what you see there, uh, I, I can't really point uh, to, uh, it's hard to see. What you see there, the slogan there, this is uh, sort of a kind of industrial version, uh, the way, the way, the way uh, Warhol looked at making art. There was a kind of uh, commodity industrialization of it, which I've incorporated into my work. Uh, you can't see it in the background there, but I used the free radical slogan on this one, but I'm going to change it to a devil in the daffodil slogan. Now, what I'm trying to, to communicate here as quickly as possible is partly, again, the idea of disinformation. And I listen to certain people. I read certain people. I actually don't read very much uh, uh, where I feel people are not on my side. I, I ignore it. I put it away. I look for people that are on my side or are are exhibiting sen a sense of my soul, my, my direction. And disinformation obviously is not something that can, uh, 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 disinformation, what is the value of disinformation? They like a COINTEL, the uh, sort of counterintelligence community, all this kind of stuff. And then interestingly, I was listening to some kind of uh, project and search or something. And they have a Stu Webb character, and what a what a sick wingnut this guy is. I mean, he has information about the workings and the the cogs, the uh, the intricate structures behind our our undermining what what the pe who the the people are that are undermining us. But he has such skin in the game. He uh, he's completely clouded with his anger and. Uh, trying to get a leg over them. He's going to get revenge. He's going to exact revenge. Now here's where art comes in. And my point is that the art is, uh, and I guess I'm talking about when you're making really fabulous work, that the art separates itself from all those kind of uh, mundane, mundane aspirations, uh, wealth, jo uh, uh, retribution, uh, 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 not to say that artists can't be real fuck ups and use that to inspire themselves because they think of it as passionate, but passion is grounded in our caring. This is what I've been going on about. The passion in a work is based on caring. When you were listening to my last uh, uh, Anisofa Mutter playing uh, a Beethoven Sonata, uh, Sonata, Sonata 9 and Sonata 7, the sensuality, this incredible quality within the playing opens up, opens up. Uh, it, it just sort of like uh, brings the light into a dark room. And this is the nature of art. It's not like listening to people on alternate media or media talking about their agendas. And everybody wants to get a little leg over. And in art, that's not the case. Art is a giving thing. The art is a giving thing. And I had, a, I had a few messages from uh, a YouTuber that, that sends me messages. Uh, this is a test message. Uh, he calls himself, this is a test. I may meet this fellow. He's in Toronto. Uh, but 
the idea that I was trying to say is what you need to what you need to do is uh, make follow this sense within oneself that opens the doors of creativity, which possibly could lead to originality. And originality is the thing that actually takes us into the next level of our existence. And there is nothing wrong with appreciating and enjoying that originality in terms of yourself, meaning that you use that originality. I've been using my extended family to make the work for the last 30 years, and then, or 35 years, even in the last four or five years, I have actually branched out from that and have been able to create now this is this this may seem arrogant to some people but I have actually understood you you look at the painting in the background you say oh, it's just another fucking painting what's what are you going on about well no it's not just another fucking painting is if you were actually there when Pollock made his drip paintings and I'm using Pollock not as he he is kind of like the most obvious person in this because the departure was so drastic so so absolutely epic from what we had understood to be art before, he made a giant leap. Uh, I should probably spend some time on Pollock because I had not understood or realized what was going on until the last sort of couple of years, uh, same with Warhol. And now this is another this is another YouTube. I'm gonna deal with Warhol and Pollock because they're such important people, but I'm referring to myself. And people looking, they come into the studio, I've mentioned this before, they say, they look at a painting and they say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I've seen that. And this kind of uh, inability to appreciate and take something in. And what I'm telling you is that if you spend time at bettering yourself through a discipline, and it better be, it better be something you love, that's what I think. If you do something that you don't like, it's unlikely to net results. Do something you love. You're going to eliminate all the disinformation around your own life, like what is being propagated now. The disinformation is incredible. When you get to uh, the people like Alex Jones or David Icke or, or uh, governments on the whole are basically organizations of disinformation to the population because the population needs to be controlled and needs to be kept under wraps. And then you have explosions like the Occupy movement, which immediately gets undermined and uh, hijacked by, by organizations, probably high up, like the Soros uh, Open, open uh, something institute, the, uh, yeah, or all these organizations that are funded from follow the money, the uh, dubious channels. But art is separate from this. This is the beauty of it. I'm not talking about Stalin paying artists. Now even those, I, I was at Documenta one year and they had some incredible 60 foot by 40 foot painting made by the communist artists. But even in that, even in that, that propaganda art, there was a kernel, a seed of defiance. Uh, I could see it. I could feel it. It's not, art is not suitable for propagating your agenda. Art is, the nature of art does not make it suitable, even though the, uh, the morons, the fuck ups, the retards that think they can use us to propagate their ugliness, it doesn't work. There is a quality in art that is separate from all these agendas. And this information is eradicated by artists making their work. And it's fabulous when artists break through into originality. And this is not happening too often these days. There is very little originality. I, there is very little originality. And the reason I can say that is because I've understood something through my own experience what it is to be original. And you look at the painting in the back, it just looks like a painting. You need to see it. You need to see it to realize what's gone on. And I have left a little video showing you how I make the paintings, which are very different from a traditional way of painting. Painting is paint. Painting is brushes. Painting is chemicals mixed together with 
to, to make a paste to put on and I have completely adjusted those things that we use traditionally to make a painting. I'm no longer using paint the way it was meant to be used or the way that people every day use it. Even Pollock dripping. Pollock dripping was a breakthrough. This is epic. I have understood something. I am making original work which will be seen hopefully in my lifetime because I've said I'd like to sit in a Paris pub and have a cognac and a cigar. I think you can still do that there. You can sit in a pub and have a cigar. Well, this is uh, uh, my point. My point in this video was to just sort of ramble on a little bit because I was listening to this disinformation being propagated and interestingly the disinformation had a quite a bit of truth in it. I'm sure there was. There was truth in it. But the point is the integrity, the source that this information comes from needs to be without attachments. That's art.